Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch, a selection of some of the top news stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Palestinians protest demolitions in occupied East Jerusalem. Guatemala's president forced to shelve a regressive life and family protection bill. And in Brazil, activists demand stronger protections for isolated indigenous groups. Palestinians in the occupied East Jerusalem neighborhood of Jabal al mukabir organized protests and observed a general strike on Thursday, the 10th of March, against home demolitions planned by the Israeli municipal authorities. The Israeli municipality of Jerusalem reportedly plans to demolish around 800 Palestinian-owned homes in the area. Palestinians believe this is part of a much larger and long-running Israeli project of expulsion and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians from East Jerusalem in order to colonize and repopulate the area with Jewish Israelis and ultimately to annex the occupied Palestinian territory into the present-day state of Israel. Similar demolition and expulsion campaigns have been carried out by Israel across the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem, most prominently in the neighborhoods of Sheikh Jarrah, where Palestinian residents have been facing attacks by both the Israeli state as well as right-wing Jewish settler groups in recent times. According to reports, many local shops and stores in the Jabal al mukabir neighborhood remained shut on Thursday as part of the strike. Palestinians also staged a protest vigil in front of the municipality office. The protesters were seen holding up posters and placards, denouncing ethnic cleansing and expulsion policies of the Israeli state. According to active stills, in the first 45 days of 2022, at least 127 Palestinian structures across the West Bank, including in Jerusalem, were demolished by Israel, with no clear corresponding figures available for demolitions in the historic 1948 Palestine. On to Guatemala now, where far-right President Alejandro Giammatte reversed course and forced Guatemala's Congress to shelve a highly problematic and widely criticized life and family protection bill. The turnaround came on March 10th, two days after the bill was passed, ironically, on Women's Day, on International Women's Day, that is, March 8th, by an overwhelming parliamentary majority. Giammatte then asked Congress to shelve the bill through a message to the nation, or else, he said, the bill would be vetoed. The president said that the bill violated at least two international conventions ratified in Guatemala. The decision came shortly after social movements took to the streets to protest the bill, where a group, while a group, sorry, of opposition party legislators filed objections against the bill to the president of the Congress. If it came into force, the bill would have increased prison sentences for women who have abortions from three years to between five and 25 years and imposed penalties of up to 50 years in prison for doctors and all those who assist women in terminating pregnancies. In Guatemala, abortions are legal only when needed to save the woman's life. The bill also targeted the LGBTQ community, banning same-sex marriages by declaring marriage as an institution between a man and a woman, and forbidding de facto unions. Additionally, it would have prohibited educational institutions from teaching about sexuality and gender, stipulating that no sexual orientations other than heterosexuality, are normal. The bill also specified that sexual education is exclusive to parents. And today's final story is from Brazil, where activists are demanding stronger protections for isolated indigenous groups. Back in September, <clears throat> back in September 2021, the National Indian Foundation, or FUNAI, identified an uncontacted group near the Purus River, a tributary of the Amazon that defines the boundary between the nations of Peru and Brazil. In the over five months since then, the agency has not taken the necessary measures to ensure their safety. The group is at growing risk of environmental crimes and diseases which could be life-threatening. Indigenous peoples in Brazil are already facing an er erosion of their rights in favor of mining and agribusinesses. Researchers and av advocates have accused FUNAI of dangerous negligence. Here's a video feature by Brazil de Fato on the issue. An expedition by the National Indian Foundation, also known as FUNAI, identified a group of isolated native people until recently unknown by authorities in the south of Amazonas state. FUNAI confirmed the existence of the group in September 2021, but the information was made public in February this year. During the expedition into the forest, servants heard the voices of members of the group, but couldn't record images of them. Indigenous individuals and researchers fear that the delay of a FUNAI to take measures of protection can put the group at risk. Without the state's protection, anyone can go there and kill them. It's easy in the Amazon, they kill well-known people. Why don't they go after the isolated indigenous people? 
because they don't exist. They are only infinite data. Who is going to prove it? A man goes there, brings a lot of gunmen, they enter these lands, they are people from the same region, land grabbers. They disappear with the native people and they will say, look, they don't exist, they weren't here. This can happen. We have stories that demonstrate this in the Amazon. Because these isolated groups do not keep contact with non-indigenous people, they are more susceptible to respiratory diseases. Flu can be lethal. The newly confirmed isolated native people are in the city of Labria, south of Amazonas, in the Puros River Basin. There, the deforestation rate is one of the highest in the country. In that region, the COVID-19 vaccination rate is under 30%. The local indigenous movement warns of the possibility of contact with non-indigenous people at any given time. We want a vigilance base there urgently, a base to protect the land. Also, we want a health vigilance plan in the region. Exposed to environmental criminals and infectious diseases, this group is at risk of disappearing. To Wellington Figueiredo, one of the country's pioneers in working with isolated indigenous people, the disappearance of these groups would be an irreparable loss to Brazil's cultural heritage. The isolated indigenous communities are stable and complex. They have rules and community and individual duties depending on the role each person has in the society concerning security, eating, religiousness. They are very complex and the contact with non-indigenous will end it all. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on this story, please head over to our website peoplesdispatch.org and give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.